Hi, my name is Joe Martin. I'm the pastor at First Baptist Church in Toledo. Thank you for taking a few moments to listen to this message. I think that perhaps, maybe, this message is one of the most important ones because of the timeliness of it. And I really hope that you will stick with me until I can get through. You know, I want to talk to you about loss. We've been talking about walking through loss. But I think it is oftentimes the over, you know, we try, we all are going to experience loss. But the first principle of walking through loss is avoid as much loss as possible. Avoid loss. Do what you can. You know, it seems like this week we're reminded of the three P's that we talked about months and months ago. Politics, protests, and pandemics. You know, the politics of the last few years, and especially the last few weeks, really the last few months, and especially this week, have brought great loss to people and to our country. A loss of confidence, a loss of security. And you know what's really sad? A lot of what's gone on in politics in the last months has especially brought the loss of many, many friendships of people that have been, and this is in families too. Many good friends, fellow church members are lost to each other right now. People who were in the past loved and accepted each other's differences have been poisoned. They've been poisoned by a kind of thinking, a kind of stream of media and messaging They've been poisoned to the way they think about each other. I have heard and seen people talk about anyone who disagrees with them uh, in this current time period, their particular opinion at the moment. I've heard people say things that they talk about somebody who disagrees with their politics like that's the basis of their salvation. They, they're not saved or they are... Um, are there, they're certainly not, if they're unsaved, they're certainly unwanted in their lives. This is heartbreaking to see because it's a loss. And it's a loss for me when I see it too. You know, you know that your mind has been corrupted when you begin to see the people around your life. Sometimes people that have been in your family and people that have been in your friendship circle for years, and you begin to break them into a, a strict binary liberals, conservatives, Democrats, Republicans, whatever you might do. The, this is a, if you, if that's the way you find yourself talking about people and thinking about people, rather than seeing them as fellow human beings or even friends or fellow citizens, then you need to take stock. You need to pause for a moment and reevaluate where you're at. You see, political cult like zeal on no matter what what it is, what the origins of it is, has led to terrible losses in relationships and in communities across our land. This inciting anger that's been going on for a long time, this division that has led to, well, that second P, protests. And while there is an appropriate kind of protest where people maybe peacefully, people peacefully express how they feel about things and demonstrate about this or that. Um, that's a long tradition in our country, and it's a good tradition. These last weeks of protests, particularly in Washington, D.C., have led to the death, have led to death, have led to, for the first time in American history, and I want this to, I want you to really weigh this, the first time in American history ever, where the capital, our capital, was overrun, vandalized, and ransacked by our own citizens, by Americans, by American citizens. Not even in the Civil War did that happen. The leaders of all parties had to literally lay down on the floor and then flee out of the capital to secure facilities because of angry vandals and rioters and, and people that actually stole stuff. One person was killed tragically and many, many policemen 
and women were injured. It's important for us to stop for a moment as God's people and you as an individual and face the fact that this is not um, this is not a small thing. You need to connect that kind of behavior with the thinking that has brought this country, the thinking and the messaging and the kind of talk and the kind of conspiratorial thinking that has brought this country to this place of cruelty and a loss of civility. You see, then there's also the losses that we've experienced in this pandemic, not just the losses that come with being restricted and not getting to see people, um, but the deaths. You know, yet this week, we reached a, a milestone. 3,800 people died from COVID this, in one day on Wednesday of this week in the United States. You know, our country has lost over 350,000 people. And our county, even Lewis County alone, where we are in Washington, is running 40 positives a day. Now, what that means is that every one positive, we estimate that they are infecting at least one other person. So that means 80 people are being infected a day, and those 80 people are infected 80 more people. I'm getting calls as a pastor, small town pastor. I'm getting calls daily of people, church people even, exposed, testing positive, getting sick on one level or the other. Every day that's happening. There is a circle going on in our country right now of death. And the circle of death in our land that is, is incredibly serious. It's harder for us to see because it's happening in ICUs and in care facilities. And in, it's spread out enough in a large country that we aren't as aware of it. And so there's lots of people that are dishonestly telling you, minimizing and saying it's all made up. But the fact is, it's not made up. Along with the circle of death in the land, is there is also a circle of loss and grief. You know what? Researchers have told us that just the immediate family, that means like a husband or a wife or a kid, somebody who's living in the household, just the immediate family of the people that have died so far, 3.1 million people are mourning the death of a close relative. That means 3.1 million people are going to miss somebody at their birthday or to play golf or to go hiking with or to... Um, come to Christmas or to Easter this year. 3.1 million people. And that doesn't include the many, many other friends. That's just an average. That is a huge effect. As a matter of fact, the long-term effect of this on millions of broken hearts cannot be calculated when you put it all together within our entire country. You know, the first principle in loss is avoid loss. You know, I talked about my friends that on, on the midweek at the, the people that went up on the mountain and they weren't prepared and they were, there were helicopters looking for them because they didn't get ready and they got stuck out overnight and those people were at risk. And, and finally, you know, this is what happens. You have to avoid loss for yourself and for others. Loss is always hard. Senseless loss is crushing. If you lose someone after you know deep in your heart that you did all you could, that is a hard thing to deal with. But if you lose someone and you look back and you can see that you were the reason you lost them in part was because you were selfish and you were stubborn and you were careless and you were foolish, that is harder than you can even imagine. This applies not just to COVID or to other things. This applies to losing relationships that didn't need to be lost because of the way you have handled politics and the way you Facebook posted and the way you talked about people. People just, they, they may not say anything to you. They just quit having anything to do with you. You lose that relationship. You know, Proverbs uh, 1, 32 and 33 speaks about this issue. It says this. It says, The waywardness of the simple will kill them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But then it offers another side. Whoever listens to me will live in safety and be at ease without fear of harm. You know, so there, I'm going to give you three quick things. How to avoid loss in this time, in this difficult time right now, in these next few months. 
And you can listen or you cannot listen. But these are going to be very simple. Pay attention. That's number one. Proverbs 22, 3. We talked about that in the midweek. The prudent sees danger and hides himself, but the simple go on and suffer for it. Now, just review a little bit. The word see here in Hebrew, it literally means you pay attention. You see what political extremism leads to, what any kind of extremism leads to. Some of our political leaders this last week basically said, this is what this leads to. You end up with people bashing out the windows of the Capitol. You end up with people getting hurt and people dying and people hating each other. See this. See it for what it really is. See what hate and cruelty and alienation will cost all of us, starting in your own life. The Bible says the wise man sees, discerns danger, discerns evil, and hides himself. You know, the word see here in Hebrew literally means to advise yourself, as I said, to discern yourself. So pay attention to the dangers of political um, extremism and othering of other people. And then secondly, pay attention to the danger of the virus. You know, you need to seek good medical advice from your doctors. I cannot believe the people I that talk to me and tell me some of the this the the this things that are just absurd that somebody else told them that they heard someplace that they saw on some video. I'm trying to tell you, go to someone who gives good medical advice, sources that don't get paid. Did you know that people that put stuff on YouTube, except for us, <laughs> they are getting paid by the number of views. And so the, the wilder stuff they can put out there and the more they can get you to watch it and go down that rabbit hole, they will get more money for it. And so there's an ulterior motive. Stay up to date. You know, God is out, out there. He gave you a mind. Pay attention. See. He wants to show you. Proverbs 22, 3 says, The prudent man sees danger and covers himself, hides himself. But the, but the simple go on and suffer for it. The second thing you need to do is you need to fight complacency. Did you know that I've found when it comes to both politics and the pandemic, most people aren't rebellious, really, are defiant. They're just deceived, are careless, are complacent. You know, Psalm, uh, Proverbs 132 says, for the waywardness of the simple will kill them. You know, the word simple means easily deceived or easily seduced. And this will kill you. And the complacency of fools will destroy them. The word way, the way, the word waywardness is where we get the word backslide to backslide. You know, I find even with myself when it comes especially to different issues, whether it's the political thing or whether it's the um, pandemic, it's easy to get pressured. And we slide, you know, you get pressured uh, away from doing what you've been told is the right thing to do. Maybe it's money pressures, or maybe it's business pressures, or maybe it's just social pressure. I think it's mostly social pressures. We slide away from being wise and careful. I do a lot of public events, sometimes services for people and things that I have to do. And and oftentimes I go to those events and it is amazing to me, but people won't wear masks or social distance. They just don't do it or they won't do it. I don't know. And I feel a lot of pressure to lighten up, but I don't lighten up. You know why? Because lightening up would be backsliding. It would be irresponsible and not loving my neighbor. It would be waywardness. Many people are adjusting um, willingly. In other words, there's a lot of, most of the people I know, like those of you especially that are involved in our stadium services, if you're just awesome, you just are willingly, joyfully adjusting, you don't necessarily like it, but you just do it for the good of others and, and just to be able to see people. And you're doing it. You're doing it willingly. You're making an example to your kids. You're not just grudgingly, you know, going along with masks or whatever social distancing is of washing your hands. You're not just grudgingly doing it when you absolutely have to. You're willingly doing it to look out for people. But you know, the Bible says the opposite of that is the simple just go on like normal and they're going to suffer for it. And so will others. The complacency of fools will destroy them. 
The word complacency means false peace. You know, there's a good kind of fear that God puts in us. You know, being afraid of needlessly alienating other people and destroying your family relationships and your friendships and your church relationships is a good fear. Destroying relationships with people that you care about in your country, that's a good fear. You ought to be thinking about that. I don't want to alienate them unnecessarily. I want to share the gospel with them. I want to stay in a relationship with them. You know, it's fine to talk about things and to learn and to grow and to listen. It's fine. It's fine to do that, to have a conversation about politics or about different opinions about things. But what it's not fine to do is to bumper sticker people over and over again and never listen to them. Never really hear how they came to that position. Never hear people's perspectives, even if maybe they're uninformed. That's not okay. Being afraid of getting COVID and then unintentionally giving it to your mom or your grandpa is a good fear. I've had somebody call me and tell me how that happened just in the last recent time. Gave it to their mom. They they almost died from it. You see, you have... There's an old saying, there are bold men and there are old men, but there aren't many bold old men. (laughs) You see, sometimes we get um, uh, people say, well, I'm not fearing. You know what? There's a big difference between being fearless and being foolish. You see, and the third thing is, listen to godly counsel. If you are going to get through these next few months, you're going to avoid loss in your life or in the people's life that you care about. Listen to godly counsel. Proverbs one thirty three says, But whoever listens to me will live in safety and be at ease without fear of harm. Isn't that great? We want to not cause harm. He who walks with the wise, Proverbs 13.20 says, grows wise, but the companion of fools, that means, and by fool, that word fool means the unteachable. Those that won't listen. You know, it doesn't matter what happens to them. It doesn't matter what consequences they have on their life or in other people's lives. They won't listen. The companion of fools will suffer harm. You see, this passage makes clear that wisdom and discernment comes from God. How? Mostly through others. Parents. Moms. Dads. Doctors. Pastors. Advisors. That's where wisdom comes from. Getting instructions on fixing your dryer from YouTube is a great thing. Basing your views about politics or about your medical condition or the pandemic from talk radio is not wise. That is foolish. That is foolish. That's very important to remember that God uses people. People that have earned the right to be listened to. Not just because they have a mic in their hands or a pulpit to talk on. And by the way, that doesn't make you wise and discerning just because you can, you have a platform. And let me tell you, that includes me. You're, I want you to check it out. I want you to have a conversation with me if you want to. You see, my opinion about medicine isn't, isn't as valid as Dr. Rob's opinion about medicine or Dr. Falloon's opinion about medicine. I asked them, do you? My opinion, or what somebody says, some, somebody I don't even know on the, some video, my opinion about medicine isn't as valid as my daughter Katie, who spent most, I, I mean, I watched her, spent most of her life going to school to learn this stuff. You know, my opinion about all kinds of things, my opinion about how to fix a car is not nearly as valid as some of you people that are mechanics. And you know what I'm talking about. So stop taking medical advice from truck drivers. Stop taking medical advice from truck drivers. And stop taking truck driving advice from doctors. (laughs) It's a simple principle. You see, even Proverbs is a call to listen to the wise person, to listen to wise counsel. Wise counsel involves wise people. It doesn't just fall out of the book. Wise people who earn the right for you to listen to them. You know what Proverbs 2, 1 says, My son, if you accept my words and store up my commandments within you, 
My son, listen to me. It's a father. Turn your ear to wisdom, applying your heart to understanding. And if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as silver and search for it as hidden treasure, then you will understand and fear the Lord and find knowledge of knowledge of God, for the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. God will give you wisdom. You know, you can't just watch a video that's an hour long and exciting and all polished and say, it makes sense to me. I guess my mind's made up. No, you have to search for it. Wisdom isn't just memorizing Bible verses. It comes from living, breathing people that God uses. Like I said, fathers and doctors and mothers and responsible and rational leaders. You know, we need to listen to leaders and we need leaders in our country to be responsible and emotionally rational and stable. As we walk through this most politically divisive and and difficult winter since the Civil War, let's avoid losses. Let's avoid losses in our relationships by paying attention to our words and what we say online and what you retweet and what you share. Don't pass stuff on unless you're absolutely sure of it. Let's avoid complacency about people being hateful and cruel and bigot, bigot, you know, and bigoted and and um, you know, violent even. Let's not be complacent about. Oh, don't just say, oh, that's just old uncle so and so. No, you need to not be complacent about it. And then you need to seek wisdom in reevaluating your language and your posting and your responses. And and most of all, you need to reevaluate your allegiances. You know, you only have one absolute allegiance if you're a follower of Jesus. Your absolute allegiance is to Christ and to Christ alone. Not to any politician, not to any preacher, not to anybody else. Your absolute allegiance is to Christ and Christ alone. And so as we walk through the most deadly winter since 1918, the most politically divisive winter, the most deadly winter since 1918, avoid losses to this invisible danger that we have called COVID-19 by paying attention to the uncomfortable facts, to quit making exceptions to everything, by covering yourself. The, The prudent person sees danger and covers himself. Wear a mask. Wear a mask. Just do it. Wear it willingly. Wear it joyfully. Wash your hands. Social distance. Avoid gathering with people indoors, especially without a mask. And avoid complacency completely in your life. Don't make exceptions, even when you're pressured. You be the responsible adult to encourage people. Look, we're getting to the end of this. There are treatments and there's vaccines that are coming. And this is, this is, this is um, going to help. And so you be the responsible adult. You seek and listen to wise counsel, not conspiracies, not to crazy videos, not to radio shows or news people that are not, um, not qualified to give this advice. You talk to your doctor. Talk to some of the doctors in our church. Talk to Dr. Mack or talk to Dr. Falloon. Ask questions to people you know and trust. You know why a lot of times they don't get asked? Because we don't really know for sure if we want to hear their answers. Proverbs 132 says, For the waywardness of the simple will kill them, and the complacencies of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will live in safety and be at ease without fear of harm. I just want to thank you for watching this. And I do want you to respond. There's some next steps at the bottom of your page. And you can respond to those if you'd like. You want us to talk to you and help you and encourage you. Let us know how we can do that. And I also want to continue to thank you for being so generous in your giving. People drop off checks, people mailing checks, People doing it online, you can go to the on the website that you're watching right now and push that green button and it says giving and you can give. And that makes it possible for us to help each other get through this in a way that honors God. God bless you.